Yo, it's Duff for the Cloud Chaser TV, man. We back up in this thing again, you dig? This Chicago, this Chicago, nigga! Hey, man, we got this exclusive content coming to you today, man. Mouth Hoffy, come show love. We break down a whole bunch of topics, gang. So, from Diddy, Remy and Papoose, you know what I'm saying? The Keefe D situation, you know, um, Jay-Z, like, if he would interview Jay-Z, it's gonna go up, gang, for sure. Shed is live on Facebook and Twitter with a hashtag. Let them know what's going on. Salute, salute, salute to the people, man. Let's get to it. Mav Hoff, the word. Yo, Compton Menace, what's good? What you you? Yeah, we can hear you. Yo, Menace yeah. is popping, nigga. Yeah, breaking news breaking and shit. Like, with the, when it comes down to that um, young thug trial right now, you seeing, like, basically what the defense and the prosecutors, what they facing, what they up against? Yeah. Like, with the, uh, that dude, Tick. You been seeing any coverage on that? Yeah, yo, your man, Tick. <laughs> you, you, you talk about halfway... Halfway crooks, this thing is a halfway snake, bro. He don't want to do it. He don't want to do it, bro. You can tell, like, this nigga does not want to tell. He wants to get out of jail, but he don't want to tell. But, you know, it look like they putting the pressure on him. Now the nigga trying to, now he's starting to, like, I guess give up information. I don't know how relevant it is against Thugger's case, but it's, you know. <laughs> Your man couldn't remember nothing. Y'all was wondering, <laughs> I wonder if these niggas got like some sort of shit going on. Like, oh, niggas gonna tell. All right, I'm gonna get up there and I'm gonna show niggas how not to tell. Right, right. That's shit. That that's what's crazy because it's definitely seeming like it could be a play involved allegedly. You know, um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely coming out that dude in the sense is working for Young Thug too. You know, even if he don't know. Right. You know, you got the whole uh, when the, when he asked when they asked him about um, why I still being a game, could they could people get jumped in? Do you know what's the ranking? Sit like a whole bunch of different questions when it comes to game related situations and organized crime. In right, shit, it don't seem like why I still is organized and doing organized crime. Right, and and the Rico is supposed to be against organization. Right. So organized crime and all that and these niggas <laughs> thanks to this nigga <laughs> they're like yo even if the nigga do tell like his testimony's been so ridiculous like his defense could be like yo we really going we really going off for of this facts and then you know i don't know if you noticed this but he had to win um the part when he asked him like so you can just go and get one of young thugs cars he was like, yeah, you just go to the draw. You get the keys out the draw. You just get the car. He was like, what about renting? He was like, yeah, he a rent. Do he know what you're going to be doing with the car? No. So if you know about it, it's the situation with Nut. They saying that Young Thug is the person that rented the car that the guys drove to allegedly kill Nut. So right. they already, you know, picking shit out to use in the future of this trial. Right. But the way it's looking though, bro, this shit, uh, like, let's be honest. If, you, if you've been watching the trial, if you tried to watch the trial and you didn't just watch the highlights or whatever, this shit bogus as fuck, bro. The whole shit bogus. They got these niggas reading transcripts of these niggas talking about social media and shit like that. What is the fucking point? What is the fucking point? I think at this, at, at this point, the only purpose of this fucking trial it's to drain niggas' pockets. That's what it's looking like. Cause even with like like you said, what's the like even the first so I guess this tick dude must be one of their main witnesses or something. Because prior to this, they was using a bunch of the um, police and detectives coming up there and they was pretty much discussing petty ass crimes like three, four grams of weed, uh caught with fifty dollars. You know what I'm saying? Caught with pills that belong to somebody. You right. know like this shit just didn't make any Stupid sense. Shit. Yeah. Stupid shit. But you know what's the L shit? What's the judge name? You know anybody know the judge name? I forgot his name. But you talking about him having that dog? No, I'm talking about that. Yo, that nigga's getting money. He's fuck. Yo, he's stunting on niggas in the fucking courtroom, bro. You seen the fucking airing this nigga uh, had on the other no. day, my nigga? <laughs> I ain't this fit. nigga, you know the, you know back, like back in the days, like I say, probably more like. Like fabulous first popped on the scene and niggas had the big chunky square airing joints. You know, yeah, what I know about? what you're talking about. Yo, this nigga had one of those on. I'm like, what is this nigga doing up here with this shit on, bro? 
And one end, too, like, yo, my man, that shit was shining, son. These niggas, they letting you know we getting money, nigga. This is the whole purpose of this shit. We yeah. Getting, we getting bread, nigga. I'm on TV now, nigga. Let me throw in my, throw in my, my, my fly shit, you know what I mean? Like, come on, what is the purpose at this point? You said the nigga had a dog the other day? No, he got, like, he brings a dog for emotional support. That's every day. For emotional support, he brings a dog. Yeah. Bruh. You ever heard of that? What <laughs> is going on, son? What is going on, bro? You telling me my life is in the hands of a nigga that's going to leave out this courtroom and go talk to a dog, yeah. bro? Like, come on. <laughs> it don't make no sense because I had heard what? about it and people thought that I was tripping. They was like, yo, you tripping. Then... It was on the Breakfast Club. They said the same thing. Like, yeah, he brings a dog for emotional support. For emotional <laughs> support? Nah, son. Nah, that shit crazy. This dog sniffing out bombs or something. Because niggas is like, we tired of you, nigga. We tired. Like, what's, what's up? No, the... Yo, imagine that, bro. Like, okay, all right. Uh, a court is adjourned. This nigga go in the back and start talking to his dog. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> And I know, um, you know, you crazy. interviewed um, 21 Savage, and 21 yeah. Savage just dropped the album yesterday, and um, on the album, he threw some bars at um, Gunna. You heard about it? He threw bars at Gunna? Yeah, basically saying how, I don't got it in front of me, but basically he was saying how um, Gunna, Gunna was supposed to be down for him. He was flying y'all. No, he was saying that y'all was supposed to be down for him. He was flying you on private jets, letting you F on um, females and shit. And then you chose to take the stand. You went from a um, a cold D to a witness. All right, so here's my question. Is Gunner still on Thugger's label? Yup, he on that label. And that nigga's, he's doing numbers right now? Hell yeah, he was he was voted like, I think he had the number two or number three um album in hip hop last year. Top. Top. Yup. Top. Now, not, not before this. After this. Not right after this. So so now you gotta you gotta wonder like if Gun is still on Thugger's label and he's doing extremely well, what's that money going to? Shit thug. It's going to thug for sure. Now I gotta re reevaluate on whether you know niggas can't say it. They obviously can't say it if it's if a nigga told him, yo, get it, go ahead and get up out of here, keep this shit, keep the shit moving. They obviously can't say But that. you heard about what his his um young thug's father been saying this whole time? Yeah, yeah, yeah he's he trying to get niggas off his back. Now, now, now think about the, the, the conversation that could be going on, right? Okay, all right, cool. Yo, man, you know, I did this shit, but everybody coming at me, man. Yo, yo, I, I just need niggas to say something. Somebody got to say something. Somebody viable. Doug his pops. That Facts. That's the shit. When I seen that, I was like, yo, why would his, like, it must be something to it because why would his pops come out, keep, you know what I'm saying, saying this? He even went that little baby recently because of the comments little baby uh, had said. Right. So, if you thug her, if it, let's say the nigga did snitch, right? Let's say, like, you know, this, this wasn't part of the plan and all that shit. You have a mixed feelings right now because your artist is doing extremely well. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's doing extremely well, but, you know, given the circumstances, like, that shit is crazy. You think, you, you think about, like, the mechanics of this whole situation, it's bugged out. I'm starting to think niggas are smarter than we, we think they are. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's true. And then it's like, um, like like what what um Uncle Murder had said on his wrap up, he was like, "Man, we just looking for Thug to say something." But uh, unfortunately, Thug can't say anything. He right? can't say nothing because you know what they do after that? They cut the pipeline. For sure, and that's one of the reasons he didn't get bond because um if you if you know about the wife and Lucci case, wife and Lucci got the same Rico before on uh, Young Thug, and he got way more um charges on his Rico than Young Thug. Murder too, just like Young Thug got on his. And um, he got a bun, but Young Thug didn't because they saying that shit, he got a reach. Mm. Mm. I think I think that's based based on uh, 
the the what you call it what what there was a a, a text thread where um I think Thugger was like, yo, ain't nothing happened to these niggas yet. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. That what they brought up in court. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. If, if, if that's looking like the niggas really sending niggas out there or whatever, if they using it for that, nah, they ain't going to let that nigga go, bro. Because it witnesses, they like them being dangerous. Look how many fucking witnesses they got on this shit, bro. Shit, 300, they had 700 and some, but now they, they broke it down to 300 and some. Yeah, but think about that. You, the, the protection of 300 niggas. Ain't no way they're going to, nah, they're not going to let that. Nah, that's not happening. Yo, are, aren't they saying now Birdman and Rich Homie Kwan are also state witnesses in that case? They're supposed to be I heard right. something like that, but I don't know if it's true. <laughs> Yeah, no, I saw an article in the, on Hip Hop DX that apparently they're on that witness list. So, I mean, I don't know what that means, but. I mean, they probably got subpoenaed. Uh, it ain't, ain't like niggas is about. There's some niggas is volunteering, and then there's, there's niggas is getting subpoenaed because of whatever relationships they got. Birdman would definitely get subpoenaed for this because, you know, he he had he plays a role in, in Thugger's, Thugger's, Thugger's label, his, his upbringing. It, it, not his upbringing, but like, you know, his his come up, like, just witnessing activity and being around and shit. They gonna subpoena that nigga. Man. And plus the Lil Wayne shit, cause they they added that on there too, didn't they? Yeah, I think the judge gonna wear a dipset chain the day that that, that Birdman. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, Chuck, remember what we was talking about earlier about the French, the French, um, French Montana? Oh yeah. So I don't know if you heard this whole thing with uh, D Thing. So D Thing recently uh, released from jail, and like as soon as he got out, you know he get down, he get up with uh, Coke Boys. He get up with uh, French Montana. French Montana gives him a chain, and look like give him some money. Now, my people was telling me like, yo, bro, people saying that chain look all um, flimsy, small and shit like that, which, you know, that ain't my business. But they were saying that when Luca Brasi, when them um, gumbo boys holler at him, they going to give him a big chain and a lot of money. And yesterday that, that happened. They gave they told him to take off the Coke Boy chain and put on the gumbo chain, which was way bigger and gave him like he been flashing like 20s and shit. Look like about maybe 20, 30,000. But they gave him look like over a hundred thousand in cash, all hundreds, and gave him a big gumbo chain. Mm -hmm. So do you you know anything about like um if he signed to French or because they were saying on the post that it's a bit more right now? Could be. But shit, if this nigga walking around collecting jewelry and money from niggas, respect Yeah, the it's a good look, ain't it? You know what I'm saying? You think that's what's holding up his first day out track? I don't know if that's holding it up. I think when the nigga first get out, the main concern is to check on family. You know, let everybody know that you're good. You know what I mean? Get caught up on on your business and all, especially this time of the year, get caught up on all that shit. That first day out track, I don't know. It's probably gonna be a bigger hype if he could announce, if he could announce whatever imprint that he's fucking with. Yeah, and following following that. Following the first day out, you think that first day out track is necessary in the game in 2024? Because we we in a whole new calendar. I mean, I think I think you if you're a fan of, uh, of a nigga and you've been following his life and all that shit, yeah, that's appealing. But I don't know. I, I don't know how, how how comfortable I am with you know motherfuckers just making this jail shit cool. You know what I'm saying, like. Not saying that they they making it cool, but like, come on, bro. Like, how many rappers, how many rappers got to go to jail, my nigga? You know what I'm saying? Like, like is it is it is it part of the fucking promo or something? What the fuck is going on out here, bro? Yeah, it's wild. And I heard like this manager and shit. Like, he he don't got really too many big artists. He was managing uh Mo Three, this guy named Rainwater, and he was saying that he believes that record labels. Or often some of these guys, so they catalog can go up. Like I don't know if I that's the conspiracy, right? I mean, in reality, you know, all these niggas sign a, a 
they signed an insurance. They, 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 the labels put an insurance claim on them. Not a claim, but but a policy on them. So if anything happens to them, they make a lot more money than they probably make off of the actual records. So when you look at that and you look at, okay, this is some legal shit. If you was a nigga that just didn't give a fuck about human life and you just wanted to make the money, you would go after artists that, that stay in the midst of shit. It's in the hood. They got beef. You know what I'm saying? Sign these niggas up. Something happened to them. Boom. We don't broke the bank. Mm -hmm. Get paid regardless, but even more. Right. And in the meantime, what we glorifying? Yeah, they definitely glorifying that whole whole thing. Like, um, rappers going to jail. Like, you know, it wasn't, they said, like, Matt, uh, not Matt, but um, Uncle Murder had said that we didn't have any rappers die last year, so that was a good look. Right. Well, I'm, I'm looking at this shit like, if the top niggas in the game ain't putting out that type of content, why do why do they, why do they keep recycling the same shit? Who you who you see the top niggas right now? Little little baby, little dirt, twenty one savage, Drake, shit, Jay Cole, Jay Cole, um, yeah, give, give, bag, give, yo. Give, give me the top three. Probably uh, Drake, little dirt, little baby. I'll say Jay Cole. Oh yeah, J. Cole too. But J. Cole, he he like he put out nothing on his own just yet. No, I'm, I'm talking about world, world tour niggas. World tour about. Oh yeah, then you got to go J. Cole, Drake, and probably shit, Lil Wayne or something. Kendrick. Kendrick, Kendrick. What's their content like? Not killing. They are what I call lyrical MCs, not these fuck fuck boys. Rapping about dumb shit with low vibration. Nah, 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 no, no, nah, don't get it twisted. Nah, nah, they, a lot of these niggas ain't fuckboys, bro. These niggas is products of of their environment, and they're doing like you remember when Jay Z said, "Couldn't talk about it if I ain't live it." That shit had a profound effect on me. I knew in the hood, the older niggas didn't like the niggas that rapped about shit they never lived. So when I when I got out there, I would spit shit that niggas knew was going on. And they loved me for it. You dig that? You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. They appreciated the authenticity. Some of these motherfuckers don't gotta be the most lyrical if they seen some real shit. Look at Tupac. Tupac ain't the most lyrical nigga in the world. But some the impact the impact was the I think he went out. Nah, I think, I think he got the ball. What's the word, everybody? Ping up, ping up. Share the room. Twitter, Facebook. Yo, sweetie, what's the word? What's poppin', big jug? Hey, yo. Uh... But again, the top artists are not those guys. So what's what's really going on here, bro? Like I'm 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 confused by this shit. Yeah, it's, it is it is something behind it. It's programming for sure. You know, even down to the ladies right now. You know, the ones that's moving, it's like the same type of content. Yeah, sexual shit. And you know what, my nigga? Like I was in a club last night. You know, we be talking our shit about sexy red here and there, but not, you know, not 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 down to her, but like, you know, like, come on, like, this shit kind of ridiculous. But in the club, nigga, what? Put your hands on your knees? Nigga, <laughs> what a time to be alive. It's beautiful. What a time, what a time. You know what I'm saying? You enjoying yourself. These ladies, all right, cool, this is what's going on. I seen all, this my shout out to my man Sab, his birthday last night. We was in the joint. Yo, we saw a chick that, uh, 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 a lady was probably like in her 60s, hands on her knees, nigga. 
Hands on the knees. <laughs> we said, oh shit. This is what it is. And for Sexy Red, she probably don't take this shit serious. You know, there's artists that, that they're like parodies. You know what I mean? No, nobody took uh, Old Dirty Bastard and what he was. If you took, think about it, if you took Old Dirty Bastard's lyrics literal. You'd be like, this nigga's a fucking menace to society. Nigga, what are, you, <laughs> what, are, what, are, what are we playing for our kids? But nobody took this serious, right? Yep. Well, Sexy Red, I feel like she, she falls into that that category. She's just like a, 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 a kind of character, characterization of Ratchet. And that's it. I think that when it comes to music, bro, everybody has a different type of crowd. You got your low vibrational people that can't hear that high intellectual MC type of rap because she flies over their head and they can't comprehend the metaphors and stuff like that. Right. And, you know, every everybody has a like every there's a something for everyone. You know, motherfuckers right. like me love the era where where real MCs spit like Rakim and Nas. To me, you know, Zero Scarface. And yo, Matt, not to change the subject, yo, what's up with that Rock Cam interview, bro? Yeah, we working on it. We working on it. I'm actually, um, I actually spoke to Rod, Rod this week. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. A lot of these guys, especially guys, I think from from that era, they don't they don't do a you know Rod don't do, he don't do a lot of talking, my nigga. He's he's there to rock the crowd. You know what I'm saying? So when they do sit down, it's a big event. So they take their time with that shit. I think every artist should take their time with that shit. Like, I don't understand why, like, press runs even exist anymore. They don't make sense. You're watering down who you are as an artist going to 10 different platforms in, in the course of two weeks. I know motherfuckers think that that's like jogging the algorithm, but it's not. Look at Cat Williams. Cat Williams did that shit with Shannon Sharp. He ain't had his, he 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 don't have to say nothing until May. He went on other platforms. You know, other interviews ain't that good. But he ain't have to say nothing until May. You could, you could pick four different platforms to go on throughout a year and make an event out of it, and that's how you keep your value up. But these niggas, they'll go on my show, and then they'll go on some other show that nobody watches, then they'll go on another show that, that niggas barely heard of. Like, it don't make sense. Keep it with your mouth. I'd rather watch a show than watch a, watch a bunch of motherfuckers get drunk all the time. Same concept all the time. Nah, but, if, you know, if that's, if that's niggas' thing and there's a market for it, then I can't knock it. But when you got niggas that's not good interviewers, they're just good dick riders, like, we need to stop. Like, yo, what, what, what's really going on here? You know, come on my, come on my show. You never know what's going to happen. Motherfucker might burst into tears. Uh, uh, you gonna get some shit that you never heard before. Uh, it's gonna be introspective. You gonna, at the end of that episode, you're gonna have a greater respect for that artist and who they are, or a better understanding of who they are. A lot of these joints is like. It's just niggas sitting there dick riding these niggas. Yo, Mav, like, I know, uh, I don't know if you spoke on it after the, because I had covered that live that you had did with uh, Sirius Jones. Right. And uh, he had went on Gully TV and spoke on the situation in Miami. I don't know if you seen that. But uh, can, can you tell us your version? Look, I don't really want to give this thing too much attention. Because I see it is a cry for attention. This shit happened 10 years ago. What the fuck are we still talking about it for? What are we still talking about it for? What are we trying to remix at this point? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, only because on this platform, Sirius Jones had came up here and he had said that he was good and, you know, he didn't have any issues. So I don't know what had changed within a what, few months. What, ch what changes is when a nigga need attention and you ain't got no integrity. That's the route you're gonna go. You know what I'm saying? Me, honestly, that live should have never happened. I was drunk. <laughs> and I put a nigga on my live that shouldn't have been there. Simple as that. But at this point, like, what the fuck are we really talking about? What are we talking about? 
Do you think um that when you did the coin the coin toss that 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 kind of triggered him? If it triggered him, he should have said something right there, right? Mm -hmm. But here's the funny thing: a lot of the shit that gets said is never in my presence. I was standing right there. Hey, hey, yo, man. If you had if you had all these issues and all this in, I was standing right there, nigga. Yo, you remember I called you, not better yet, when I was in the lab, which I said, yo, yo, serious when it to come up. Like, this was a little bit after he got out, and, you know, you ain't really had it. It wasn't no bad blood. It was, right. But then I, I spoke to you about it again, and then you was like, yo, something was like talking shit. Like, Look, talking. If, if I shake a man's hand and say we ain't got no issues, we ain't got no issues, nigga. I'm not going to go back on that because... Somebody left a comment on your page, and now I feel like I need to look tough for everybody. Like, what's the point of that? What are we? What are, we, what are you trying to look tough for? All right, Matt, you done with battle rap, though? Yeah, bro, I'm done. I'm that. done. I got close to that shit, and you see all the shit that came out mm-hmm. of it. <laughs> nah, bro, I'm done. I'm done because it, it's. They say people from afar don't argue with fools because people from afar can't tell who's who. Fair. I thought maybe ARP was going to throw y'all a bag to do it again or something. Oh, nah. Nah. I wouldn't even... What would be the right, point? Right, What would be the... What are we rapping about that we didn't rap about already? Hey. Like, I don't get it. Nigga, it's 10 years later. There's new information on this? <laughs> what right. the fuck happened? That's a fact. Hey, hey, Matt, what's this battle he keeps talking about? About a, a Fight Club battle that never came out? Some shit you was talking about that the other day on. Uh, yeah, yeah, we battled. We, we, we battled in Fight Club, but it never came out because he used the same lyrics in like three other battles. And and for the record, that battle went to sudden death overtime. I know a nigga talk about you're yeah, three old and this stuff. Man, listen, man, stop, stop trying to remix this shit, bro. It's a, look, when you get to a certain level, you just gotta stay away from people that. I got a saying. When you're too thirsty, you don't drink, you drown. Some niggas is out here drowning. They drowning for some time. Drowning. I couldn't imagine myself bringing up some shit from 10 years ago to get some, and going on a press run about it. Like, what's been said that hasn't been said? Unless you, unless you remixing the story. I think I think he was intimidated by the fact that you was there and you did the coin toss and then the way dude got on his ass, like, what you mad for? I ain't hit you, he did. Like, I think that really, you know what I'm saying, kind of triggered him. Yeah, but the nigga still dapped me up after the shit. So what we really talking about? Yeah, they, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. What we really talking that's about? That's different. What are we talking about? So like back to the um, breaking news. So you got this whole situation with Keefe D. So it's, it's being said, I seen an article on it where they were saying that uh, Keefe D was on recording telling the detective how Diddy had something to do with giving him a million dollars to do something to Shug Knight and Tupac. Yeah, I, 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 can't, I can't solve that case, my nigga. I ain't got, a, I ain't got that <laughs> the information them niggas got. I think we speculating them way too much on a lot of shit nowadays. Even the Remy and Pap shit, bro. Remy and Pap themselves have not said anything about it. Anything about it. But shit, but shit is making TMZ. Facts. Like, like <clears throat> I think the thirst is, thirst is becoming real, bro. Like, it's just, it's just too nasty out here. I be seeing people talking about me there, and I'm like, damn, this, this from 12 years ago. This from ten years ago. Like, what are we doing right now? Yo, to that point, this all stems from Summer Madness One, right? Which was I think 2011. <laughs> nah, it wasn't Summer Madness One. No, it was okay. Summer Madness Three. Three, okay. Still like a decade plus, though. Nonetheless. Yeah, facts. Like, okay, I you saw that? I right, cool. Da da. All right, then we saw each other in Miami. Okay, you saw the video. Uh, now niggas is saying, oh, I think you had a purple lump on the back. No, but where the fuck we, nigga, where this purple lump just came from after 10 years, nigga? Where'd it come from? 
he needs to stop, bro. He just needs to stop. I'm, I'm, I'm from an era where I, we ain't got to talk no more, my nigga. When I see you, when I see you, you see me, let's see what happens. But why we alerting? Why we on, 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 on social media trying to be gangsters? Like, why are we, why are we doing that? What, who's that for? Who's it for? Yeah, that's what I said in my reaction. Like the way you handled that was, that was, that was, that's how you're supposed to handle it, man. Yeah, because for for me, I'm not upset. <clears throat> yeah. And to be honest, if a if a nigga claimed that he, you know, he got me, I got me, in Miami, why would you still be mad? If it's true, I don't get it. Shit don't make no sense. You got you been running. Listen, let me tell you something. After after I faced off. Uh, for the battle in, in what you call it in Atlanta, I said, "Yo, why you keep saying da 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 da?" And nigga was like, "Math, you you knocked me out on camera, nigga. Let me say what I want to say." And from there, I understood it. But this is ten years later now, my nigga. Shit, turn it off. Turn it off, my nigga. You had like niggas been through worse. Turn that shit off. There's aliens in fucking Miami. Let's talk about that. <laughs> what you think about that? Think that's true? I think it's bullshit. Because any, anytime they want to feed you some bullshit, they do it through shitty footage. So anytime you see something and the footage looks shitty, my nigga, it's, 20, it's 2023. Everybody camera phone is clear as fuck. Yeah, I forgot who was telling me. It was like, that could have been a hologram. Ain't even a hologram. The footage is shitty. My, my my daughter could probably make some shit like that up now. What about the little UFOs you see in the sky, though? We see a lot of a lot more footage of that coming out now. You mean drones with of... bright lights on them? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, seriously, man, niggas need to just start using their brains, bro. Like, it's called an unidentified flying object. <laughs> if aliens was trying to present themselves, I'm pretty sure they could do a better job than this. <laughs> you know what I'm For sure, it's no just a little was running out of military gas in mid air, like, oh shit, we ran out of gas. God damn it! Uh, uh, they, yo, have have them send some gas up from the mothership. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> the fuck is going on? These niggas just stopping, like, look, look at them, look at them. They're looking at us. Look at them. They're taking pictures. What the fuck? Nah, son. Nah, man. <laughs> Come on, man. That shit. Yo, honestly, I think it. All that UFO shit, that's us, man. That's us. You do your you do your research, you find out German Germany was working on on some magnetic, some some different type of technology. And they called it the bell. I think it was the bell. I think that's what it's called. But it's basically like like uh something that that that, that propels itself off of the, the 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 magnetic field around the earth so the movement isn't like like a jet plane or something something pushing it in one direction it's you know what i mean i think all that shit is us bro and if there is other aliens what the fuck we gonna do about it <laughs> bro, uh, bro. It, it, like that to your point though uh, as many phones and cameras we got today like just by chance, you think somebody run into these niggas or somebody catching on footage, CCTV. My nigga, niggas, so like, will, niggas will run up on a crowd and pull out an AK and niggas will stand there <laughs> and record it. Right next to the nigga like, oh shit, you about to shoot? <laughs> but but three fucking aliens walking through a mall dressed in a Bottega <laughs> dressed in a Bottega overcoat what the nah, fuck? Nah, that'll probably be on World Star. You got a hey, point yo, there. Yo, Chuck, man, can we ask no, questions? Man, it really matter, man. Bro, we, we just got to stop calling for these niggas. They said shit, niggas was clapping at them, them shits. Niggas clapping at it for what? What is it doing? Niggas ran out of gas. Leave them alone. It didn't, it didn't do shit. <laughs> the fuck? These niggas is crazy, man. The type of shit they put out there, but I tell you what's the, the scariest part of all, out of all this shit is this motherfuckers that be believing it. 
Yeah, now it's even like in the past it really wasn't making national news like that, but lately it's been making national news. Yeah, because because um uh what's the word for it? Propaganda. Propaganda is legal. It's legal to spread propaganda. And it's selling, it's making money right now, more money exactly. than ever. Listen, once you saw the news started running commercials in between they shit, then you knew you couldn't trust it no more. You need advertising money. Now, if I'm thinking like a businessman, if the news is my business, but we make money off of advertising, then that means we got to have sensationalized stories. We got to cover the, the, the shit that nobody's talking about. We got to, everything has to be sensationalized. So that we could get this bread. It ain't about integrity no more. Back in the days of news, they had no fucking commercial. You couldn't buy them shits. So the niggas had to keep it real. This is the news. This is what actually happened. We ain't gonna tell you no stories that ain't happened unless it involves black people. You know what I'm saying? And that was that. But now, God, these niggas need bread. And if that shit was a reality, it what can we cook up? Uh, can we security. Aliens, aliens in Miami? <laughs> aliens in a fucking mall. Like, like, come on, let's like, are niggas thinking? They just, they just showed the joint on TMZ. They had one that just showed up in um, what was that? Brazil. It was like two of them up on like a mountain. Yeah, hey, two, two tall ass niggas, right? You saw them shits. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, listen, man. Do you see one of them niggas? Tell them, look, the big and tall is down the block around. It looked like one of them niggas was on a phone or something. <laughs> Word up. And I bet you the I bet you the footage looks shitty. Hey, good shitty. afternoon, y'all. The footage looks shitty. Salute, salute. Come on, man. Yo, man. Yo, bro. On a separate note, right now, will you see the state of New York hip hop? What New What New York is looking like? Um, I couldn't tell you, bro. I'll be honest with you. I so often I run into like artists. That's, that's supposedly popping that I never heard of. It's confusing out here. It's real confusing. I mean, I, if, if, if y'all guys have information about, could this, this, these niggas is really hot, this niggas hot, put me on because I can't tell who's who. Knows. Yeah, it's the internet. So, yeah. yeah, the internet gave, you know, the opportunity for everybody to grow a following. So, there's so many different artists these days, and you go look them up. They got millions of views. They got a fan base. Right, but it got it got to make sense. Like yeah. you can't have a million views and 150 comments. That's facts. Can't that's yeah. That's that's something else. They buy views. Legend. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and I wouldn't even say it's supposedly buying buying views because again, they run ads on YouTube. It's a business. If you can pay these niggas to put your shit in front of people, then yeah. But it's up to them to come back and be part of your fan base. And the engagement is what niggas really should be looking for. So if you got a, a song and it's hot, but it only got a, it, it got a, a two million views, but it got like two hundred comments, then it's not matching up. The engagement ain't matching up. How you feel about Starlip? Um, she she said that she got a million, uh, four million dollars from the label recently. Oh, dope. for her deal. Yeah, Dusty. I'm, yeah, uh, oh, yeah. No, I hear what I you said. I will go with Diddy. I will go with Diddy first, then I will go to no. You know, I would do fifth, fifth, second, and then try to figure out like. How much of how much did his upbringing influence him, and why did it seem like he was smarter than everybody else during his time up there? What was the difference in movements? Because we love the gangster gangster shit from Fifth, but then we hear stories of <laughs> niggas trying to run down on him, and there's fucking fifty Marines surrounding this nigga. He was smart. He was smart. As much as you, you want to listen to rap music and they talk about snitching and this, that, and the third, no. The smart niggas, they got people that are man down, fill out this report, 
Everybody go home. This nigga was on the, the yo, this nigga was on a Rolling Stone cover. 50 Cent perfects the art of violence. How do you feel about that? I dig in, like, really figure out what makes this nigga tick. Mm -hmm. And I bet you it comes from something that he learned when he was a kid, an experience that he said, this ain't going, this ain't going to be me. Because most of us are like that. Most of us go through something and believe it or not, there's something in our childhood that's still haunting us, that's causing us to react to things that we're not even noticing that our reaction isn't normal. And then I will go to Jay-Z, the blueprint, keeping his family together, the elevation, staying silent, planning your, your, your responses. And the one time that he did not plan his response, it was probably the worst move of his career. But usually, niggas send shots to Jay-Z, months to go by, then boom, he drop a bomb on him. That ether shit was the first time we saw him be impulsive. First time. And that was so how you supposed to move, period. For all of us, what Style said, um, let the sweat dry off and then grab the cannon. That's so you don't make a, an emotional response. Because your emotions are, are there, your ego is connected to your emotions. It's there to protect you. But sometimes it's overly protective and it's out of bounds with the shit that it wants to do. So you got to check it. It's a tool, but it's not you. It's not who you are. Your, your base self is when you remove those things. Who that person is, that's who I like to talk to. Oh, that would be dope. Classic. Sure. Right. So, like, you know, it's 2024. You know, you one of the leaders of this podcast podcast space. Like, what 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 are we looking forward to in like twenty twenty four? Me quitting and doing music full time. Seriously? I said me quitting and doing music full time. No, I'm that's reason. breaking news. Or what? You the doing the that? reason why I mean, I guess it's breaking news. I never, I haven't said it to anybody else, but that's my goal. I want to get to the point where. I can stop doing this and do something that I love and share the way that I think rather than trying to give it to you in small portions while you're paying attention to somebody else. I want to be able to give you how I think full time and put a rhythm behind it. So maybe somebody might listen to a math hopper song one day and make a better decision. Maybe somebody might throw in a math hopper song one day and decide not to go down the block and kill that nigga. Maybe somebody might throw in a math hopper song and realize, yo, we all human. Maybe somebody might throw in a math hopper song and feel like, yo, if he did it, I could do it too. That's my goal. I'm giving you small pieces of me while you're paying attention to somebody else. I want to be able to do that full time. And I'm nice. Mm -hmm. It's always been a dream of mine. It's what this is where I want to go. I'm gonna see if I can. So how often it. you plan on dropping this year, uh, as far as musically? Um, probably, you'll probably get a release from me every two to three weeks. Oh yeah. So it's up. It's up. I got 174 songs in the stash. Red, am I lying? Nope. Hell no. Just, and, and still recording? And still recording. But a, a lot of, like, the way that I write, the way that I create, if I'm not trying to be lyrical and I'm not trying to, like, scare other rappers, I'm trying to give you a mentality. I'm trying to make you listen to something that is going to alter the way that you think. 
I'm trying to give you something that is going to make you stop thinking about the bullshit and get a grip on reality and understand how much control you have over your own reality. Nobody saw this coming for me. Nobody saw this coming. If you would have told me back when I, right after I walked out from punching niggas in the face, yo, one day niggas are going to look at you as one of the best interviewers and da da da, I would have been like, what? <laughs> yeah. But, but you I, can't change that. I figured something out about myself that I always kept hidden from other people. And I just, okay, cool. I'm going to run with this. And it hit. So as much as niggas, you know, niggas can argue who's number one and this, that, and the third. If you look at all the people that they would say my podcast is a competition to, there's a clear advantage to where they started and where I started. So for me to be mentioned with them, it's like, nah, this nigga really, he really did it. I'm the only person up there that ain't been on tour with these niggas. Never had to compromise who I was at all. So that's why you said that cat, that cat Williams uh, interview that 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 got to you right there. There was yeah, some messages in there. There was a lot of messages in there, and, that, and that's what attracted people. I mean, yeah, there's the drama and all that shit, but there's a lot of people thinking. You can't tell me he didn't get you thinking like, hmm, is this shit really going on like this? He introduced a new idea that wasn't popular and it caught fire. Shout out to Shannon Sharp. Yeah, like they saying that that's the best one of this year right now as far as... Uh... You know, the viral went viral and then oh, there you might know. there might be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them mm -hmm. coming this year. But for right now, that's that's the yeah, shit. We right here in the beginning of the year. And again, I want to say everybody that responded to Cat Williams, boo, boo. <laughs> she was trash, boo, <laughs> boo. I seen comedians get the most serious they ever been in their life when addressing another comedian. Why? So Why? True. Something touched the nerve. You think that Cat Williams set the standard though? Like far as people that's doing interviews, you know it is some people, like you said, you got the gift to bring certain things out of a person when you while you're doing an interview and that's why you're good at it. But it's a lot of times guys go or women go to different platforms and they, they don't reveal themselves like that. You think that that's going to be the new standard? Like Cat Williams' your status uh, uh, tone for the rest of the year? Um, shout out to Fabio Foreign. He said something to me that was like, hmm, that's kind of deep. He said, these are the new movies. See that? It's a movie. We are so detached from each other through this device that we hold in, in, our, in our hands and it always trying to make us think about self and not community, that it is now a flourishing business to, to sit and talk with somebody. Think about that. Yeah, and then if you think about it too, it's like our culture, we so against like therapy and shit. Like, is this like the first st like steps to it? We are now humanizing, humanizing the people that we didn't think was human. We get to see, oh, these niggas ain't that different. Oh, I thought like that. Oh, I went through that. That was always my goal in, with, with the show, is to humanize this person that you might have looked up to. And show them how much y'all got in common. Because that's something that I saw. I said, oh, nah, this shit is just a decision. 
It's just a decision of how you feel about self that gets you to that level. Simple as that. Most of these guys are just people who decided, I'm great. So when I walk in this room, yeah, I might be scared, but there's that voice in the back of my head that's reminding me, I'm great. Take the step. Make the leap. Don't convince yourself of how it's going to go wrong before you do it. Take the step. Make the leap. Make your movie. Make it a movie you could be proud of. Now, I got to take these kids out. But um, shout out to everybody that was listening. Salute, salute, bro. Appreciate Go you. Ready.